it became extremely important to me to chronicle the adventures of my family, of, of Jim and of me and of Lucas and Chelsea in our search to find the real Mount Sinai that started out there on that amazing trip we took to Egypt in January of 1992. It's been something that's challenged us. It's been the most difficult, the most time-consuming, the most arduous journeys we've ever made. Now we will have some climbing to do right up there to get over that ledge. The mountain climbs and every trip we ever made were nothing but difficult. You know, Jim and I, the kids, we came from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. This is a flatland. This is not mountainous territory, and we'd never been out in the mountains climbing them in our lives. Chelsea's feet were killing her. To wind up in a place where we were physically so challenged with the heavy backpacks and having to climb up over rocks and, and um, to get to the places we needed to in order to be able to film, even from high altitudes, none of this was easy for us. But in all of it, there was a glory and an awe that is very difficult for me to even explain right now. You going on down? I'm going right through here. Look here. It's nothing that I could ever, ever say was too hard or too difficult. It has left us with the memories of a lifetime, of, of an eternal time. It means so much to us. Actually here. Aside from all that we had to get ready and all that we had to prepare for, knowing that we were going to be alone out there in the mountains, this is not a place where if you slipped and fall, you could call 911 from a cell phone. We're talking the most remote areas that you can possibly imagine. Dad, have you went this far? And to know that we would be alone out there. And on most occasions, we had our children out there with us. We would get back to the other side of the country after one of these trips. And the mother instinct would kick in with me and I would, I would think to myself, what are you doing? Why are you putting your kids through this? You know, people would come to me and say, guns pointed near your children and you're taking them back? Have you lost your mind? And I would think there on the other side of the country, yes, I've lost my mind. I, 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 I can't explain to you why we feel this is so important that I would risk what we're risking to do this. Aside from the fact that arrest was always imminent, that sh shots had been fired over our heads before down in the valley, it, you know, we could have been killed. We literally could have been killed. But at the same time, there was such a drive to do this, to get, you know, sometimes people talk about they feel like they're on a mission from God. Well, you know, you, you laugh at that and you think that's a ludicrous thing. And yet that's almost what this felt like because when we were going and doing these trips, we were almost fearless. A lot of what we did around the Mount Sinai area, uh, we went to the Split Rock area and traveling around there where we'd go, we'd stop at a place where there was a bunch of the circles, a bunch of uh, kilns or dwellings, get out, look around. Um, that was my big opportunity to find things, although I was never allowed to venture off very far by myself. We're on the way from Tabuk to the mountain, and Tabuk's a little city where we would stay between the trips. And we were driving to the mountain, and all of a sudden, we noticed this foamy looking stuff on the road. And it was just like a white, it wasn't thick or anything, it was just, it looked like foam. And me and my brother were all excited, and we were telling my parents, it's snow, it's snow. My mom's like, no, it's foam. I was like, Mom, there's no foam on the road. How can foam get on the middle of the road? And she was convinced it was foam. So we kept driving, and it, there kept being more and more of this foam. And so we finally got out, and she realized, oh, the kids were right. It was snow. <laughs> look, at these, look at these kids. They haven't seen snow since Steamboat Spring. <laughs> look at them. So we played in the snow, and <clears throat> it was just amazing to see snow in Saudi Arabia at all. 
and as we, you know, as the snow kept falling and we were noticing on our, because we had big coats and they were dark, and we were noticing that all of the snowflakes were little stars of David's, every single one of them. Like you can, we have on the video and, you know, we're looking down at our shirts and there's this little star of David's everywhere. And in the science books, it says that there's no snowflake is alike. Because I was in science class and when I got, you know, after this trip, I went and looked in the books because mom said it, it was an impossibility. And sure enough, in the books, it said no snowflake can be alike, but we have proof on video that snowflakes are alike. During the course of this time, as all this evidence was being uh, documented and we were, we were getting this all important film, it was all coming together, this body of evidence that we now have here, that we now have out of the country, that we've now brought together. That's why it's so important right now that we feel like what we went through to get this is is both gut-wrenching and exhilarating at the same time. We didn't just waltz into these places because we were allowed to live in Saudi Arabia and freely snap pictures and take video and bring it home and share with people. This video and this photography that we have and all of these, these trips that I'm chronicling now and all of this story, this came at literally at blood, sweat, and tears. This came at the very edge of exhaustion. It came at the very edge of anything physical I've ever done in my life. When we were up at almost the 8,000 foot mark on Jebel Laws and, and were just completely, almost completely out of water. Just a spectacular view. And smashed up against 20 foot tall granite slabs in an almond grove that was so thick and so choked with dust that we were literally coughing ourselves to death and having to break through places like that to finally get out on the top and get these beautiful vistas of Mount Sinai or, or what we believe could be Mount Sinai in the distance. I can't tell you how the, the agony of this and the exhilaration of this. And now that we're all back here in the States, this is why it is so important to me that this all becomes of record so that none of this passes by. If these things are, in fact, what we believe them to be, and if the evidence through the professional looking glass does line up with what we think it is, the implications are so profound that all the maps dealing with the routing of the Exodus in the back of all of our Bibles are going to be rewritten. And they will be rewritten based upon hard fact that's still there laying under the ground in Saudi Arabia. If these things are what we believe them to be, the implications are earth-shattering. <laughs>